Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the Editor-in-Chief over at TheServerSide.com and I want to talk to you about five of the big changes that are coming up with the Jakarta Servlet 6-point API, which is going to be part of Jakarta EE10. Now, I should say all of this comes with a lot of help from Greg Wilkins, who penned an article for the server side all about this topic. He's a project lead on Eclipse Jetty and he's also a committer on Jakarta Servlet, so you know that this information is coming from a, a great resource. And so point number one, the Jakarta Servlet 6-point API is finally going to remove all of those deprecated methods that have been bothering you for the last 20 years. And I know you're worried that that's going to cause a little bit of backwards compatibility. Well, you've been warned for a very long time about all of these deprecated methods. And if they're not going to pull them out now, well, when are they going to pull them out? I think we're all going to be actually a little happy that the methods that are deprecated are actually finally gone and people can start writing clean code once again. Now, another big change, immutable request and response wrappers. Developers now have the ability to implement durable, immutable requests and responses. There were problems in the past with race conditions when we were trying to do some asynchronous programming with the servlet API. Well, race conditions no longer with these more immutable request and response wrappers and the identities that are associated with them. Also, we've got URI security protections. We all know as servlet developers what a challenge it is working with URIs, those text strings that come in and it's not just those text strings, the URI that comes in, but the changes in the underlying specification over the years that has changed the way that we use semicolons in a URI or the way we interpret spaces or escape characters or all of those problems. Uh, it was mentioned in the article that uh, working with URI security is kind of like having to know the dark arts of servlet security. Well, we've got that all built right into the specification now. It is standardized, it is uniform across implementations, and it's not something that we have to roll our own with anymore. We can use the servlet API to help us with all of the URI security protections that our applications need. Now, if you're a seasoned servlet and JSP API developer, you have run into issues with cookies. Now, the Servlet 6.0 API, it now allows developers to add new attributes to a cookie without creating an underlying API dependencies. This makes the Servlet spec more flexible and makes it more closely aligned with the speed at which technology moves today. We no longer have to be linked to the different changes that happen in the cookie APIs inside of our Servlet and JSP applications. And finally, well, there's just all around improvements in the Servlet 6.0 API that everybody can use. With Servlet 6.0, the only thing we're leaving behind is the worst practices. Those programming models and functionalities that were supported in the specification, but haven't been best practices for doing web based development for a very, very long time. So there's a number of great changes in here that allow developers to build faster, simpler, and create applications that are more scalable and applications that can compete even with servers that only support HTTP. Sure, there may be some issues with backwards compatibility if you're still writing applications like we did in 2002, but if you've made the move to Servlet 5.0, and made the Jakarta namespace change, and you're interested in doing enterprise software development properly, or at least the way that it should be done in 2021 or 2022, well, you're gonna find there's a lot of improvements that are gonna help you out in the Servlet 6.0 API.